Hello and welcome to Pricing College with your hosts Aidan Campbell and Joanna Wells. This is the last episode before the Easter school holidays in Australia. So uh, Pricing College uh, is not out for summer. It's not out. We continue with our podcast as we know how vitally important it is for you to get your pricing info. Um, In today's episode, we want to cover... Uh, in the press recently, and anybody involved in B2B and B2C will be looking at surcharges, fuel surcharges, different surcharges, basically covering, uh, trying to protect people from the rampant inflation that we're seeing, particularly petrol, fuel, electricity, all these aspects, with uh, inflation hitting probably 7 to 10% in different countries. But I, th- I think in today's episode, we want to discuss why... You know, it's not always a win-win, these surcharges, and it's not always a one-way street, and there's certain things you need to be aware of. Yeah, so we've been seeing, in, yeah, in terms of uh, what Aidan was talking about, in terms of fuel, fuel fluctuating, and businesses have to accommodate a lot of those costs. Now, to a large extent for many years they've just like absorbed those costs but now it's become untenable with inflation to do that so what what's happening now is is that businesses are push the, pushing those costs onto onto the down the value chain um, whether it's with b2b customers or if it's b2c onto onto those customers and that feels in terms of uh, fuel costs um, that's quite significant for both I, I suppose both of those those sectors but essentially, it's looking at itemising price. So you've got your, your unit price, keeping that fairly steady, but then adding a, a surcharge on, on top of that price uh, to accommodate that, that fluctuating uh, cost, whether that's uh, in fuel. Now, I think really the, the, the bit about surcharging and pricing like that is that it really is open book sort of costings. You're really explaining to your customers um, and itemizing your costs at a line item. You think you're sort of being smart by not really moving the price, unit price, but really what you're doing is, is exposing um, uh, yourself and really showing what you know the margin that you can make and potentially can lead to a sort of more cherry picking line item uh, discussion all based about costs and for me you know it's it's a dangerous road to go down because then what you're discussing your costs as opposed to the value you generate for your customers you know i think we completely understand why companies are adding surcharges why they're increasing prices uh, the, the first time i think i remember seeing this was in airline tickets a number of years ago uh, when they'd add fuel charges, etc. But I think the point we want to hammer home is that it's almost, it sounds like an easy way to push through price increases. We realise that you have to do it, but it's not really value-based pricing. You know, you're really, you're, you're distilling it down to, to cost plus pricing. And with that, you're almost exaggerating the negative impacts. Like some of the, the example I'll give of this is when you put a focus on a cost and you apportion it to a bucket and that bucket is, one-off or temporary fuel cost high, higher prices, you know, that, that opens up a lot of issues. So the example I'll give now is in Australia, I think the, the Ukraine war kicked off, was it February, late February? Oil prices went through the roof. They've almost doubled in, you know, a month and a half or whatever it is. And then we got a lot of letters or we heard about a lot of letters people were receiving saying fuel charges would be implemented. I think some of these letters arrived on a Monday and then on the Wednesday night, the Prime Minister appeared on TV saying, we're going to you know, cut fuel, the, the, the tax on fuel by 20 cents. And already you're seeing petrol prices drop. I think they're down now in Sydney from $2.20 down to $1.75 I saw yesterday, which is like 40, 50 cents, a very significant decrease. And if you're invoicing customers on a monthly basis in arrears, for example, which many B2B businesses do, you know, how can you then justify that fuel surcharge? You know, are you going to implement it only for the first two weeks of the year or the month first, and then for the second two months, two weeks, reduce it? And what happens if, 
you know, fingers crossed, this war in Ukraine, terrible war, gets wrapped up quickly and ends and we've peace again. What happens if prices drop significantly and they drop below where oil prices were previously? You know, are you going to then actually decrease your prices to customers? Because that's, that's a very logical request from a customer. Uh, I know many businesses who received these letters as soon as they saw the Prime Minister on TV were like, well, hey, you know what, let's, uh, let's rediscuss this because that clearly makes no sense anymore. Another example I'll give was when you're when you're tying these things to government policy what you need, really need to be aware of is that government policy can change and what is announced today may become not politically you know good news next next week and we're coming up to a federal election in Australia there could be a change of government and and one one example I'll give is the carbon tax that came in I can't remember even how long ago 5 6 7 years ago where there was a carbon tax on on many different aspects but then a lot of companies pushed through price increases they did the surcharge basis on the carbon tax and then of course lo and behold the government reduced or removed the carbon tax even retrospectively so it, it did not even apply for the period it was supposed to and what did that do that created like i know of one example in the waste industry where it created a, a terrible uh, accounting issue where companies were demanding customers were demanding literal cash back and some of the com- companies did not have that cash to pay so you got to when you're really surcharging when you're apportioning money against stuff it's becoming an accounting issue and if that's what you're doing you you might even need to consider keeping money in escrow uh, uh, we're seeing that a lot um, with clients who are who have these sorts of rise and fall clauses within in, within their commercial terms and contracts um, because of their retrospective view of costs, and this is not just in regards to fuel of everything, really, and their inadequate uh, accounting systems, uh, IT platforms and systems, um, you know, they're actually, you know, a quarter potentially more behind the curve uh, and implementing these rise and fall clauses which are really irrelevant by the next quarter anyway. And then customers are just going, well, you're way too overpriced. Or some customers are laughing and going, look, we're getting this for nothing. And ultimately, what that means is, you know, the the business is significantly uh, losing margin um, daily, um, purely because they're focusing on these sort of uh, accountancy-led pricing uh, mechanisms. Um, uh, and I suppose ultimately there has to be a change, and, and we we speak about this uh, a lot on the program that you you've got to make an, a significant change in how you view and measure value in a business, dollar value, profit value, and uh, your, your new com- commercial strategy to get out of this uh, accountancy-led, um, very operational-led uh, a, a pricing uh, and business model because they're both intertwined. Um, because a, your customers will certainly tell you that you know that way of pricing isn't good enough for them, and they they're now moving across to other suppliers who have uh, uh, more transparent pricing, um, and you know choosing not to work with businesses like this because it's very difficult to do business, and even at an invoicing level, everything is. Uh, much more cumbersome and slow when you look at your costs retrospectively. How do you invoice, especially when your customers are complaining and then it becomes like an invoice-by-invoice change uh, as your customers complain. It's untenable. So, yeah, there's big changes happening in B2B and unfortunately that's driven by panic and and global changes, um, you know, inflation um, and wars Negative changes are forcing people to think differently about how they price. Uh, and, but the, the upshot is that's leading to opportunity, new ways of thinking. And we're seeing in, in Australia that people are progressively moving more to a value-based system. Unfortunately, it's because there's, uh, the, what they've done is, is limited and actually now hurting them in terms of uh, margin exposure. But, you know, there's plenty of opportunity if you just reframe and reset your commercial strategy to value. You know, what I would say is, on this podcast, if you're a regular listener, you're more than aware that cost plus pricing might have some flaws. And like fundamentally, surcharging is enhanced cost plus pricing. So it basically is the same flaws that we've mentioned for normal cost plus pricing are the same flaws, perhaps even more distilled, perhaps even more exaggerated and focused 
because basically you're shouting at somebody look at this cost you're, you're literally saying look at this cost on the invoice you know so realistically what you're doing is you're exaggerating enhancing the, the negative impacts of cost plus pricing obviously it can be very useful you know if you need to increase pricing because it's a bit like the old um it gives you a reasonable excuse. It gives you a justifiable, sensible, plausible reason to, to to increase prices. It's a bit like, you know, I didn't do my homework because the dog at the dog at my homework sort of routine. It's it's providing a, a reason. That reason, you know, it's not as fundamentally those reasons are not as good as an actual value based or more uh, developed pricing approach. So yeah, it's maybe short termism. Let's call it short termism. Obviously, it's better to implement a surcharge than go broke, 100%. We completely understand that. But just to point out, there are negatives, longer-term repercussions. And um, there's an op- what's that saying? Every cloud has a silver lining. Whatever the opposite of that is, every silver line cloud has gray. Anyway, you know what I mean. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Bye. Well, I think I think we've covered off a, a fair bit there. If you if you have any anything that you'd like us um to, to, to pick on in, in that in that topic, feel free to um, for, reach out to us and we can delve deeper into it. Um, and uh, yeah, we look look forward to uh, getting some more feedback from our listeners. So in the meantime, have a great week and uh, uh, we'll speak again next week. Thanks a lot for listening. And homework assignments are due on the desk on Monday. Thank you. Bye.